Hello. Thought it's about time I got my face involved in these videos rather than being a wimp. You'll see I've actually done my hair, which is the first, well you won't see because I've never been on camera before, but I've done my hair, which is probably the first time this year because I've just not left the house due to the pandemic. I wanted to talk today about feeders because there's a lot of stuff on forums where people ask a lot of questions around how you manage your feeder insects for mantids and different methods and what to use. So I just thought I'd give an overview of what I do, um, which is ever evolving and I'm learning new things about just making things a little bit easier. But I just thought I'd talk through how I manage them, what I do with them, where I get them and just some tips you might pick up. So. First things first, with mantids, I would always use flies. Crickets I've had no luck with before. They get mites, they stink, they potentially can chew on your mantis when he's molting. Flies, just a bit more safer. And a lot of people struggle to manage them because they fly, so it's difficult to get them out. But there's a few tips in here that I've picked up that might help with that. So first of all, I have a pack here which I've ordered from eBay of green bottle flies uh, in their pupae form, pupa form. You can get blue bottle flies which are a bit bigger, you can get house flies which are a bit smaller, these are kind of in the middle so that's what I've gone with this time on my order. Just depends how big your mantis is and what he's going to be eating. And we'll also go over my fruit fly colony which I try to keep populating rather than having to buy a massive tub full of fruit flies just to feed a couple of spiderlings. The problem with that is they just explode in population and end up crashing because there's just so many of them in the pot, it just doesn't really work. So let's go through what I do with my flies and some tips that might help you with yours. So first things first, we don't want all of these hatching all at once, obviously, because then we're gonna have 100 flies and not enough mantids to feed them to. So I want to separate them out into separate pots. There we go, a nice even separation there for our flies. Now the reason I've done this will become apparent shortly, but the next thing I'm gonna do is get them something to eat when they hatch from their pupa. And for that, I'm gonna use raisins my thought process with this is that their high concentrate of sugar, which the flies will like and in turn the mantids will like, and they're just convenient to just chop up and throw in here. They're not going to go rotting or mouldy too fast. Um, there might be better alternatives to this. I've tried honey, but the problem with honey is that it's very sticky. The flies get caught in it when they hatch out and then they die. Um, I might try getting some honey and leaving it to crystallize so it's really solid and then putting that in there. I don't know if you can just use normal sugar. I don't know how, if you just get household sugar, whether that's been treated with anything, that's the only thing that puts me off that. Um, but good sort of homegrown local honey from somewhere. Um, if I can get some of that to crystallize so it's hard, I can then put it in here. And this should let the flies last a bit longer when they hatch because obviously once they come out, They've just got a very limited lifespan before they just die off. Also, once they do start hatching out, I do intermittently put water in here um, just to keep them hydrated as well. Now, these pots that I've got have got little holes that I've poked in with a hot needle through the top um, just to give them some airflow, which is also something that's important. And I've got a syringe which I can sort of squirt water through the holes if I need to. Just a few drops just to keep them hydrated, don't want, to, don't want them to drown or anything. So we've got our flies, but how do we stop them all just hatching out at the same time, having too many flies to feed and then dying off from not being used? So the answer to that is you put them in the fridge and cool them down. I will show you over here. I have a mini fridge. Uh, which I find is the most convenient. I know it's a bit of an extra expense. Um, it's just easier for me in my living situation because I don't think my housemate's gonna appreciate me putting flies in the food fridge. Even though they'd probably be fine, but I get it, it's fine. So 
I will now pop these in that fridge to keep them cool, which will slow down the process of them pupating into adults. And I get them out one by one as and when I need them. So I've already got some that's been left out for a few days now. I don't know how quite how long these will take to hatch out, but obviously these will pupate way quicker than these guys here. So then comes the question, what do you do with them when they actually need to be fed? You've got a bunch of like 10 flies buzzing around in this tiny little pot. You take the pot, put it in the freezer for about five minutes, depending on the size of the fly. The bigger guys probably need a bit more than five minutes. The green bottles, maybe three, four minutes. And the flies will slow right down. They won't buzz around anymore. They will some, sort of appear as if they're dead, basically. And then you can pick them out with some tweezers with no problem, chuck them in your enclosure. Five minutes later, the heat, the heat will wake the fly up and then it'll start buzzing around, walking around your mantis will then be able to catch it. Just don't forget to put the lid on the container because otherwise all your flies will start waking up and you'll have a room full of green bottles. Next thing I'd like to talk you through is fruit flies. I know there's two different types and I can't remember the name of each one. I think one's slightly bigger than the other ones, but these are flightless fruit flies. And I like to keep them in these little containers because I don't really need that many at the moment. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. It's really straightforward. All I've done is took these uh, plastic cups which are ones that some mantids I ordered came in you can just get them for cheap from anywhere really had some other plastic deli cups which I turned upside down fit in the top to stop them escaping and then as and when you need to you can lift the tops off get your flies out or tap them out put it back on this one I kind of modified and put a bit of mesh over the top of it but you don't really need that to be honest these are fine in here as long as they've got ventilation holes so for my fruit fly mix I use repashi uh, I know you can make your own but I don't fancy doing that and messing around with it because I just don't need that many so it's easier for me just to use this mix even though it is quite expensive I think but this will last me for ages. So what I've done I've just got a bit in the bottom there if you can see it it's really watery at the moment and what I will do is keep adding ripashi until it thickens up to a consistency where it's kind of not moving around anymore. Um, I guess a good way of thinking is can the fly walk on it? Because if the flies can't walk on it, as soon as I put them in, they're just gonna drown. So you wanna kind of get it nice and thick. I kind of put in more than I need because otherwise it tends to just dry up too quickly and uh, that's not good either because then they've got nothing to eat. The fruit fly larvae, not that I know that much about it, but I think they plant their eggs in the in the bottom of this stuff and then the larvae come out squirm their way up to the top or on the sides of the plastic cup pupate and then hatch out as flies there we go nice and creamy like some kind of rank mashed potato uh, the next thing we need is something for them to walk on because otherwise there's not much surface area inside here for them to populate and lay their eggs or whatever they do in there. In this instance, I'm just gonna use paper. I know normally you can buy, I don't know what, this aspen I think or something that normally goes in there, that sort of curly, curled sawdust stuff. But we don't wanna spend money on that. So let's just use some scrunched up paper. So there we go, that'll do. It's not exactly the Hilton, but it will do the job. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend using that mesh lid because I just opened that and it stinks. So yeah, you don't want that smell going around your room. As long as it's got some ventilation though. Uh, yeah, so what I do from here is just tip out, I don't know, 20 flies or so in here when it looks like your other one's getting a bit old. And then they'll recycle, reproduce, and you can do that over and over as many times as you want. One thing about fruit flies, that's why apparently they're used in a lot of medical science-y stuff, is because they have such a short life cycle. I think it's like two weeks or so, or three weeks, some ridiculously short amount of time from birth to adult to laying more eggs. So yeah, you can kind of cycle these really quickly. And there's a multitude of videos on how to do this, but if you want to get your fruit flies out, the key is just tapping. So you tap this, they'll all drop to the bottom. And then you can just kind of lift it up, tap, tap, tap into another container. A few will drop out. And as long as you keep tapping them, they're going to keep falling down. So they're not going to crawl out and go out everywhere. A 
quick note, whilst I was editing this, uh, the other day I did read something on a forum which I thought was awesome for fruit flies. So somebody suggested that you get your fruit flies out <clears throat> and put them in a sauce bottle, one of the squeezy sauce bottles, and then you can kind of aim it at your enclosure and then squeeze it and blow the little fruit flies out into the enclosure, which is probably a bit easier than tapping them in. At least for me at least, because I've got front opening enclosures. So yeah, that's just another option. I thought that was a really good idea. I'll definitely be trying it. And last but not least, I do have some dubias and not at the moment, but usually have some locusts as well. The care for these is something I do mean to look into a little bit more, uh, but for the most part, I keep them on vermiculite because it absorbs any moisture that might turn up in the container and prevent things like mold and bacteria populating. So I just keep them on vermiculite, throw in some fruit every now and again, and just make sure you're removing any fruit they don't eat. But just be aware that for the most part, particularly flower mantis will pretty much always need flying prey. So don't be surprised if they won't take your hoppers. My devil's flower mantis, I've tried to tempt him in with some tweezers with one, but he's having none of it. The hoppers and the dubias are mainly for some of my bigger mantis and my tarantulas. So in a nutshell, order your pupae online. You can get them from eBay or Amazon, really, really cheap, like two, three pounds for a pot of 100, 150. Separate them out, keep them cool, and then cycle it, getting them out as and when you need them. And make sure they've got something to eat. That will prolong their lifespan. I hope you found this somewhat useful. I'd looked around when I first started and there wasn't that many tutorials on how to manage things like feeders, particularly flies. If you've got any questions and particularly if you've got any tips or anything you think that I could do better, please let me know. I'm all ears. I'll always welcome the feedback. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Be kind to insects. They're not gross. <laughs>